welcome back to the Coins and Connections podcast, season two, episode seven. I am Sinquanta, and I'm super excited to have a special guest with me today. I have Ashley Clark. She is the founder of Since Two Cents, and she coaches families on how to change their beliefs about money and break generational financial curse for children of color. Parents count on her practical resources, kid-friendly tools, and easy-to-follow guidance to deposit financial freedom into their children's future. So welcome, Ashley, to the Coins and Connections podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be speaking with you. Yes, I'm glad to have you here. And as saying goes on the Coins and Connections podcast, we always start our episodes off with rapid fire questions. So these are just questions that I'm gonna kind of throw at you and then just answer whatever comes to your mind first. You ready? Ooh, the pressure is on. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> no time to filter, I like it. Yes, all right, so the first question is, if you could buy any type of food right now, what would you buy? Some tacos, Mexican <laughs> food. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tacos? Um, I like um, chicken tacos, refried greens, that's my favorite. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, we just missed Taco Tuesday. I know. But um, we can have it every day. Of the week. <laughs> That's right. My kids yesterday were saying Taco Wednesday, and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if a movie was made about your life, what genre would it be in, and who would play you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, it would definitely be a comedy because uh, <laughs> I like to get through life by laughing. Who would play me? That's a really good question. Mm, it make you think. <laughs> yeah, who would play me? Um, you know who I like? The um, young girl who just produced a mo- movie. Um, uh, I can't think of her name, but I like her a lot. Um, oh, and she was a Is little it Marseille people. Martin? Yeah, yes, Marseille Martin. Martin. I like her vibe That's a lot. Her. So I'm cool with Marseille Martin, Martin playing, playing me. That would be dope. So this is a good one. When I dance, I look like. <laughs> when I dance, I look like um, a well-clothed stripper. Ooh, yes. Um, <laughs> 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 that is too funny. Okay, hard or soft? Hard. <laughs> how, how hard? Very hard, please. <laughs> I like my tacos hard too, speaking of. <laughs> so what is your last thought before going to bed? Um, well, I'm big on manifestation and mindset, and so I like to clear my mind as much as possible, and I like to speak thoughts of gratitude. Mm, yes, that's how we all should be going to bed, giving thanks and making sure we wake up the next morning, too. Right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get into our main topic, and I'm excited because I really want to know the answer to our very first question, and it is, how did you come up with your business name? Oh, man. And I get that a lot. I didn't know that <laughs> that the name was going to be so good when I thought about it. First of all, I really don't know. So I was like, mm-hmm. since, and I was like, since, and I was trying to figure out what the word play is. So I it out, spent, sent it out to a few friends, and I was like, should I say since, number two cents, since two cents. And I believe my friend Tiffany um, had a great influence, and she was like, since, two cents, but I kind of knew since and since I wanted to go together, so just figuring out how I wanted yeah. it, to, it to flow, um, so I started asking my friends, like, hey, what y'all think, tell me what you think about this, um, so that's how I came up with it. Okay, I like that, I like where friends are, they're like our little, uh, co-workers, but they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, hey, hey, I need y'all to help me figure this out. opinion real quick. <laughs> So tell me um, a little bit about your business and when did you start? All right. So my business is um, fi- promoting financial literacy. I started, um, I unofficially started um, years ago without even knowing it. And I helped one of my friends. I was helping one of my friends with their credit, with their budgeting. And she was like, you need to help other people do this. Mm. Why don't you help other people do this? So in October of 2018, I was like, okay, I'll help other women do that just by, you know, just just because I didn't realize that the information that I knew so many people did not know. So I um so I was like, okay, I'm gonna help ladies do this. And then I um and then I started pe- people were like, We wish we had this when you were kids. I have kids. Mm-hmm. 
working at a bank, uh, I used to get frustrated when people would come in and they'd be like, oh, what's, what's this? What's this? What is the interest? I'm paying my credit card is not going down. And I stopped, I had my coworkers at the time, I was like, let's write down the words that we hear a lot that people need explanations of. So we started doing that. And so I would take it home to my kids and I'm like, this is the stuff I want you to know. And actually I posted on Facebook and surprisingly enough, you were one of the people like, I <laughs> hope you have, these are cards. And my cousin and other people just were like wanting more. So I was like, yeah. Well, I mean, I know it's a market for it because I work in a bank and people are continuously asking. And I always heard people say, I wish we had, I knew this when I was a kid. And I like to be proactive better versus retroactive. So I'm like, mm-hmm. let's get with these kids. I love working with kids, of course, having my own. So that's how it all began. Yeah. So speaking of the bank, when did, um, was that your first job in the financial industry? Oh, uh, well, my, um, First job in the financial industry was actually banking. I started out as a teller um, when my daughter probably, well, she probably about 11 years ago. And um, yeah, so I started out with banking, but I always liked my, um, in college, economics was my major. I fell in love uh, in 10th grade. Uh, Miss Clark was my economics teacher and I fell in love with economics. And I, I don't know, I just got it. I was like, oh God, <laughs> I like how this stuff works and seeing yeah. all this stuff. So it just continued from there. Mm-hmm. I love that. Uh, it's so crazy because sometimes our callings are on our life before we even realize it. Oh. So we go through those stages. Uh, right. Like, oh, yeah. So this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> even now when people I get, you know, interviews and people are asking, like, how long? And I, and I as I have to think back, I'm like, when I was a little girl, like seven years old, I asked my dad mm-hmm. to bring me ten dollars worth of dimes. <laughs> little stuff like that. Like my yeah. grandma always said, I need to save. Not realizing that, you know, all of it was gonna work together for my good later on yeah. in life. Yep. So I want you to go ahead and kind of explain to us um, about your Sensistence board game and your cards. Like, tell the people what is it about, who is it for. Um, how did you come up with the idea? And just, I'm just going to let you have the floor in. <laughs> okay. All right. So we kind of spoke about it a little bit, but with going from work, working at the bank, um, and then I have my own children and finding the flashcards and simple words, um, as like, you know, entrepreneur, things you want your child to know and be aware of are things that I talked about. And so we have 55 cards within our initial back pack. We're actually working on a second pack of cards, you know, that go and dig a little bit deeper. And I'm going to continue um, as it grows further. So I had the flashcards. And I'm like, now the kids understand it is how can I give them real life experience yeah. or real life scenarios? And so that's where I thought about the board game. I knew I wanted to do a game, but it didn't kind of get solidified to later on um, within my journey. But um, the, the, so the um, board game, my favorite part of the game is the credit spinner. So mm-hmm. you start out with fair, fair credit, but different things that you do, you can get worse credit, bad credit. Um, that may affect your credit um, because that's a big important part that a lot of kids yep. and a lot of people need to know credit is important. And then my second favorite thing is the life happens card. So you can pull a <laughs> card and it's like, oh, uh, and this is important, especially for in the African-American community. Um, people, oh, a loved one died and you didn't have any life insurance. Oh, <laughs> You're going to have to pay, come out of pocket and pay. So I won't people to have these conversations um, with their children. Like, oh, wait, because people are like, when I started with the credit cards in the credit class, they're like, oh, my son got in the car asking me what my credit score was. And I was like, okay, <laughs> good. I hope yeah. you told them and were honest and let them know. So that's kind of things I wanted to think about. I mean, I talk about we have the self-care cards where you have to take a day, just read a book, yeah. listen to some music, I hang out that. with friends. Because um, financial literacy is important and in order to, I always tell people in order to be financially literate you have to value yourself enough to know that it is worth it is worth the time that it takes to move forward is worth the time to go for, go for it. So yeah, that's a little bit about the game. So without the game you can buy investments, you can buy properties you can start a business within the game based on different landing and every 
place on the card. Most of the places on the card are, you know, family related. You might see Gray and Ross. I did. Those, I noticed those that. Are my, <laughs> those are my family related. Atterbury, that's my grand grandmother's initial uh, name, and you might see a very special place. Place on the board is um, Kitty, the Kitty, um, Kitty, um, Kitty Land, and that's my mother-in-law who passed last year. So just trying to honor it my ancestor and the people I love, the people that have been down for me. So yeah, that's about the board game. So now we, I, I have so much more coming out. So now we have books. We have a coloring book that's for the smaller children that talks about saving. So a lot of exciting stuff is coming. Now that I'm home and I've left my job as of March 15th, yes. I have the time to just <laughs> sit and figure out what I want to do. And I'm just like, oh, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. And so mm-hmm. now I'm like writing it down and manifesting it. Yeah. And I have the board game and I have the um cards and me and my husband, we played the board game together, which was fun because, you know, I was being him. But then at one point I was like, dang, now you got more money than me. Yeah. <laughs> but it was one thing that um I thought was good when it says, you know, every time you like get money or you go around, save some. And that's how I won the game. Oh, yes. Because every single time I got some extra money or I, you know, I, I, I went around, I saved money. So he never saved it. Oh, yeah. see, so and that's how, he, yeah. <laughs> my son, Justice, is he's a saver. He's a saver in real life and he's a mm-hmm. saver in game. And crazy enough, I created the game, but I still have not beat him yet. <laughs> but he he makes sure he saves each time, and that a lot of times that's how he wins because he he's saving and yeah. and you and you think about that for being able you know for children it's like oh mm-hmm. wait maybe I do need to save. Yep. And if you guys are listening, um, make sure you hop over to YouTube so you can see um, Ashley showed some of the flashcards and then she gave us a little flash, a little sneak peek <laughs> of the coloring book. So if you guys are just listening on the podcast, make sure you hop over um, on YouTube so you can see that. So I am going to kind of just section uh, to some throwback questions. And we, I want to ask you, what were you doing at 26? I mean, but you, you actually still look 26. Oh, oh, sure. You might, you might look 18. Oh, okay. Oh. Hard you. She really <laughs> like hiding me up, y'all. <laughs> so, um, at 26, it's crazy enough you asked that. I think that was around the age I met you. Really? Was that what, 2011? 2012? Yeah, because I remember my son was still a, my son was still a baby and we were doing network marketing. Oh, we were. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's when I met you. I was working at a bank, and mm-hmm. I was working at a bank full time, and I just found, got into network marketing yeah. and started networking. That's how I met you. So it's that's crazy so that cool. that was the oh, age you asked. I just happened to put an A's on the paper. <laughs> it was a good A. <laughs> Dang, that's so crazy. But yeah, guys, me and um, I met Ashley. I had just moved to savannah um from maryland so i was like fresh and i don't even know how i look i think it was like a military spouse who put me on to the um network network marketing and then we all met and then it was like i saw you you saw me and it was like click 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 like hey <laughs> girl was, hey <laughs> <laughs> that was it um and let me tell y'all ashley is so dope because she had invited me into her circle of friends, and I done had girls night out with them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I, like they all went to school together, and, you know, that speaks to your character because you invited me, you know, to your circle of friends, and I still call Brittany my cousin to live. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I mean, with just positive energy, good energy yes. always yes. flow. Well, you know, you can't bring everybody around your friends. They're like, nope. eh, eh, eh. Oh, when you came in and came in and we had a good time, like we you did. went to school was just as much. <laughs> and like I said, that positive energy just rubs. I mean, yep. It's everywhere. So I want to ask you, what is one of the most important things that you've learned in your life thus far? Because I know we still got a lot of learning to, you know, get through. But what is one of the most important things you've learned thus far? Let me tell you the most important thing that I've learned. And this was in... Last year, I had a heck of a year, okay? Mm-hmm. So, um, 
my my husband's grandfather, who was like his father figure, passed. My mother in law passed, and on my daughter's tenth birthday, we had to go to a funeral. Then her best friend, her grandmother, passed. And then within that same week, once I always remember when I first started getting ill because I didn't want to wear glasses to my mother-in-law's funeral, but I had to because my vision was so off. And so with that, I had a pretty rough year. And then I ended up in the hospital in rehab. And uh, one of the anesthesiologists gave me a book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenser. And it's been life-changing to know the power of your mind, mm. the p- power of your mind. That is like now I, I like all the books. So I got that book and then somebody was like, hey, I want you to get read this book. And it was um, a book on your mind. And since then, like everything has elevated. My life has changed tremendously because I know the power of your mind. Like is we we all have a mind, but um, I don't think we ever know the real truth of the power of the mind. Yeah. I could go on and on and on about that, but <laughs> that's it. The power of the mind, um, your thoughts, your mindset, your prayers, your affirmations, your meditation is all needed to keep you in the right space. Yeah. So basically, what does your life look like now after learning that? Oh, uh, well, I think the biggest thing is now, um, I've been saying, I don't, I don't, I was tired of working at the bank. I wanted to be in control of my life, control of my Mm -hmm. destiny, control of my income, control of what I can say and not say to someone. Um, And now, I mean, as of March 15th, like I said, I let go of my job. And it's crazy to say because the other day I was like, somebody asked me when I started this business. And I was like, it could be 2019. That's the year (laughs) I had in 2019. So I was trying to think of every way to make this, no, I had to start in 2018. It couldn't be that I was in a hospital. I went to all those funerals and this yeah. business has grown like this. Um, so knowing that was, it's amazing. It's changed my life. Like I said, yeah. um, I'm in control of my destiny now. I, I'm not working anymore for anyone else. I'm in control of me. So that's been my biggest yeah. blessing. Um, I, I had quit my last full-time job in March of I believe it was 2017. So March must be like the year to, you know, the month to yeah. quit. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. It's March. Right after Black History Month, okay? Yes, okay. That, we got woke up and was like, <laughs> I'm out on y'all asses. But um, so now that you're home full time, what does a typical day look like for you? A typical day for me is I wake up, uh, and my first thing I do is I, like I go to sleep with <laughs> gratitude, I wake up with gratitude. I wake up and realize my legs are working because I, when I used to wake up, my legs weren't working. Mm. I, I got to a point where I couldn't walk. Yeah. So the first thing I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm up. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, and then I put my legs on. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm standing up. Thank mm-hmm. you. So um, I express a lot of gratitude. My children are getting older now and we homeschool. So now um, I, that's something also I started last year. I don't know how we got through that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. But um, I make sure they get up because they'll sleep all day if they can. All that tick, tick tock it all night, honey. I know. <laughs> so we get up, we get some breakfast, we get going. I come into my office. Um, I'm in my office now. I have a chair over here and I actually spend some time meditating. And so I meditate on what my day will be like. Um, my And I call my mom. My mom is, I've hired my mom. And so a lot of times I have to tell you, mom, this is a conversation as you work for me, not as a mom. So I call <laughs> my mom and I'm like, hey, this is the rundown. Is this to make sure everything is going? Um, and uh, my days are a lot, a lot better now because when I used to wake up, I used to check order, had to check orders. I used to have to ship orders. But now with them coming from the warehouse, I just watch the orders come in and watch them orders, orders come out. So that's another big difference than a big blessing in my life. Um, so we get going, um, make sure my kids get are on their assignment and not tick tocking and Fortnite. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, we finish out the assignment. We usually figure we have a good meal. My daughter started cooking. She loves cooking. So yes. like, she, my daughter loves to cook. And, and I have a Mine son too. that loves, 
to I have a my son loves to wash dishes. So I'm like, oh <laughs> like this is ideal. So um then we go out and then usually my um husband has a room upstairs. Um at the end of the night we try to, you know, play like Uno or something on the Amazon Echo. We just learned out how far those games are. So yeah, that's what we do. You can play games on that? Yes, girl. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, do every day. Yes. I'll make sure I send you the link because we're up there like, oh gosh, you could pay prices, right? All kind of stuff oh, on there. Oh yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> it's fun. So um I know you are a social butterfly. So what um platform do you feel you get the most engagement on? It's Instagram. It's mm-hmm. Instagram. It's Instagram. And I've worked uh, a while since, probably for a while, since like on Instagram, trying to, you know, figure out Instagram and engagement and all that. Um, with this business, I finally figured it out. Yeah. And so Instagram is um my biggest. And now my Facebook is growing a lot also. So Instagram is number one for me. Um, just because you get to engage with a full, I mean, I've met some amazing people on Instagram, some great friends and followers. Um, I had one person when I first started this, uh, where I was helping women, I was like, anybody want to be, um, goal friends, let's work on our goals together. Like two years ago. Um, so, um, I had, I met this, um, young lady named love. She was like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and since then she's been on BET. She's oh, doing wow. amazing stuff. She's a producer. And it's all from Instagram. We never met each other. She yeah. had a baby. And I'm telling my husband, like, I got to go because I need to check on love because <laughs> she just had a baby. So I love the um, the Bible on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and I know you think on manif- manifesting. Um, and I know you have Stolen. a cool story. So uh, tell the people how you manifested your board game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So like I said, I knew I wanted a board game. Um, and it came to a point at last September where when I, I started where I was, couldn't walk, I couldn't see, I couldn't walk. And then I ended up where I couldn't talk and I got to the hospital and I couldn't do anything besides think and, mm-hmm. and sit up there. And so I would get all of these, I would get ideas. It's like, God would just be like, oh, just yeah. down those coming to me. Like you need to do this and this is how you should do it. And I'm like I said, I couldn't talk, I couldn't express that, but I got all these thoughts downloaded, loaded. And I saw, um, I always say, if it wasn't for my struggle, I wouldn't know my strength, mm. because in that time, that's when I realized. Also, the, with the, before I even got the books about the mind, I'm getting all these ideas like, oh, you could do this, you could do this, and it just came up. And then once I was able to talk, I'm telling my mom like give me the pen let me write it down and tell you what I'm thinking of and 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 it just manifested yeah and then also tell them about how you used to take the pictures which oh oh yeah so I used to (laughs) the bank ad I used to work at was in a Walmart so of course anytime you think of something you go to Walmart so like I said (laughs) at night we try to play games with our kids so I try to get a game even though it's so so I go in the back. I put my manager out of work. I was like, hey, I need you to come take a picture of me with this game. And so I would get the game and I would hold it and I would bring in the energy as if it was my game. I'd be like, yeah. oh, my God, my game. Ah. So I go through that. Um, and I did that multiple times. And there's a picture floating on the Internet of that. But um, until finally, once my game finally came, I got it. And I'm like, oh, my God, the same <laughs> feeling. And it was that yeah. same energy, that same feel, feeling that I tried to put out because I knew one day it would happen. Mm-hmm. So just having that. And also with this um, with this game right here, I mean, not this game, with this book, Peyton Saves, mm-hmm. um, I, we, we, I had the timeline since before I start, went to the hospital. And then one day I'm getting in bed, like I said, those downloads. And it's like, boom, make it a coloring book. For the yeah. smaller children, can one only have a story, but they can write in the story and it'll work. I mean, and it just yeah. flows. And so I'm hoping this book, it'll be out very soon. Look, I have this lady with some brazing here. Yes, boo. <laughs> we, got, we got her husband with a nice face. So I want people to see. I want children um, to know that, you know, see themselves in the black and brown images that are on here. Um, just to know that all things are possible. Yeah. 
So um, I guess I would go back to professional um, as a banker, but I feel like you probably would say the same profession, but what other profession other than the one that you've already been in or started in would you choose other than, you know, financial? Like if, if you would just choose whatever, so to be in a different industry. If I had to choose a different industry, it would be a teacher, be to where I could reach kids and teach mm-hmm. kids. Um, just because I think children need to see themselves in the classroom. I was in seventh grade when I had my first teacher with locks, and here I am with locks now, yeah. and I love this <laughs> so much. But being able to see yourself. Um, in your learning environment, please. Uh, representation matters. Yes, it does. Um, so this question is always funny to me. Um, I feel like your family is pretty much a bunch of entrepreneurs and go-getters and bosses. But is there anybody in your family that does not understand what you do for a living? And do you bother to even explain it? No. I, everybody understand. My mom is like the ultimate entrepreneur. So, so I think pretty much everybody knew that it was going to, that's what we were yeah. going to do, do point blank period. So everybody understands. Um, my cousin came who my mom just helped start a business last week. Yeah. And he was like, that's all y'all do is talk about business. And we were like, <laughs> kind of and how our businesses are going to allow us to do the things we want you, you want to talk about something else let's talk about the trips we will be taking okay yes i like that <laughs> so if you could work um with three people dead or alive who would it be if i could work with three people that are alive okay first of all well dead or alive either or. okay all right so first of all I really have always loved Michael Jordan, <laughs> so it might be awkward, but I really would love to. I'm going to manifest that, y'all, so y'all be have to go back to this. And tell, <laughs> tell. Um, I would love to work with um, uh, Issa Rae. She's dope. Mm, yeah. um, I would love to just um, work with Michael Jordan just because he's dope. And let's see, one other person dead. Dead just because of um, his mind frame and the things that he said, and I listen to his music often, and I'm still so. Su- it's Tupac. <laughs> I'm always amazed at the things that he said, and I'm like, how is beautiful this all mind, still so mind. relevant? I'm like, this this man was so ahead of his time, um, and and I, I listen to Tupac. I listen to Tupac in the shower. Okay, sometimes yeah. Janae Ayoko, sometimes <laughs> Tasha Cobb, sometimes Tupac. Okay, and just listen to his mind. I would, I would. That's he's number one on the list. Yeah, blown away by so many young people taken away from us that were just brilliant. Right, um, like Nipsey Hussle, another one. Yes. just the way mm, he was educating mm, mm, through his music and mm, just mm, mm. girl. Yes. <laughs> oh, hold up. Hey, oh. <laughs> you know what? I, I cannot. I can't. Okay, so after um this podcast is, I just want what's one thing that you want people to know about you after this episode? I want you all to know that once upon a time that I I stopped believing in myself. Mm, um, that's deep. I, I stopped believing in myself. I stopped caring. I battled anxiety. I battled depression. It's always crazy. I tell my husband now, I just got over social anxiety. Now we have to social distance. Wow. How, <laughs> how, 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 how is that happening to me? <laughs> Once upon a time, I stopped caring. I stopped believing in myself. And big thing I want you all to know is I saw Sinquanta. I saw Sinquanta still promoting, still pushing her her books and I'm like and everything that she does and I'm like I need to get back in the game so yeah. I want to thank you so much for being so so open and transparent with your journey and your goals because also when I said I want to do flashcards the first thing I did was book the call with you <laughs> and I was like Q okay what I need to do and and you put me in a mindset and mind frame that it was possible so yeah. Um, wherever you at, you are in life, whatever it may be, whether you're dealing with anxiety, depression, you just feel like it's not possible. You can pull yourself back up because three years ago, I wouldn't have thought 
that this is where I would be. And thankful to be surrounded by good energy, positive yeah. friends, positive people like Q Money Bags. Hey. <laughs> um, um, it just to keep going. So that's why I always try to tell people, you know, I, I now that I now that I have um in my business going, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a big on the sis, start the business. I want other people to know that you can be done just it's nothing special. Look, well, I am kind of special, but I it's mean, not of course. <laughs> it's not a, it's not anything that you can't do that I can't do. Yeah. Facts. So on that note, what type of advice could you give to someone who is um just in that in that like, oh, I think I have an idea, but like, what advice would you give to somebody on the fence about sis starting the business? First of all, I'm gonna say sis, start the business. <laughs> Cause it's amazing how an idea can turn into something amazing. When I told my mom about sis, I was like, I'm gonna help kids with financial literacy. She, she was like, be quiet. Don't tell nobody else and let's do it. <laughs> Don't you tell anybody else we're going to just do it. And so at that time, I'm like, okay. Because my mom, like I said, she's yeah. a hustler. But now I understand it. And my biggest advice, as I tell with all of my clients who I do coaching on starting a business, is you got to dedicate yourself to 18 months. No matter what is going on in your life, you are not going to give up on yourself or this business. I made them a year and a half because in a year and a half, when you see how much you've grown, even if it's a little or a lot, you're going to be amazed how sticking to it has changed your life. And with me, like I said, last year, I sat on the front row of so many funerals. Um, I I was in a hospital in rehab. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I mm. barely could see. I had a patch on my eye. Yeah. And if it wasn't for me promising myself that I would not give up, I would have. So make yeah. that promise to yourself. Write a contract. Write it down. You will not give up when you once you start from that idea and work on it d- diligently. Yeah, and be consistent as as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, like I always tell people, consistency looks different for everybody. Right. But if you could commit to one day a week, maybe, you know, one day a week, a few hours a week, if they have to be a Sunday morning, a few hours, you know, just be consistent. Show up for your damn self. Exactly. <laughs> so where do you see yourself in five years? In five years from now? I have so many goals, y'all. <laughs> in five years from now, um, my, my most recent goal is having a warehouse, um, a fulfillment mm-hmm. center for um, black and brown entrepreneurs where they yes, can start that. banging out their um, products and make sure it's done and um, done efficiently and professionally. That's one of my goals that I will have. Um, and then from there, I want to start other business, like with things that I love, like a gun range. <laughs> um, once marijuana becomes legal, I'm going to have a dispensary also. <laughs> so um, <laughs> those are some of the main things. But right now, the warehouse, um, real estate, um, I'm big on land. I'm always looking at land. I tell my mom, my sister, like, hey, let's buy this land. So we're big on buying land. So I just want to continue to grow and flourish and not only help myself, but help my people make sure we mm-hmm. all are set up for success because it's our time yep. to step up and show up. Most definitely. So as we move to the last segment of the podcast, which is called the Q Money Bag Star of the Week, my question is, what is a financial tip that you can give business owners right now during this pandemic? Because, child, I'm seeing a whole lot of fuckery. <laughs> people, I'm like, people be like, y'all need to pay them people. Yeah, they say they don't give you a couple of months. It's just a lot. So from your from your viewpoint, what is like one solid good tip that you could give us right now? Uh-huh. First thing first, because I just looked at this before I left, is scam. Don't get caught up in a scam. Easy money, Child. quick money. Do not, do not do it. Don't send somebody money for you to get money. That's number one. I say that more as a banker also. Um, and also as a business owner is keep your receipts. Keep your receipt. Keep keep track. Um, um, keep track of everything that you have going on. Keep your receipts. Keep your budget. Stay on point. You got to get all your stuff and keep it together. So that in the end of because every all of us, everybody listening is going to be multimillionaires. Yes. And once, once we hit that stage, you know, the IRS is going to know what's happening. 
keep your receipts intact. Um, don't fall up for scams. Um, that's my biggest advice. Don't keep <laughs> up for scams. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> So um, now I want to just give you the floor to tell the people where they can find you out here on these internet streets. All right. I'm in the internet streets. Okay. So on everything on Instagram is since S E N S E the number two since C E N T S. And it's the same on Facebook on Twitter where I get a little bit more personal. It's <laughs> Ashley. So A S H L E Y two cents, Ashley two cents. That's C E N T S. And, um, just find me, holler at me on Instagram. I love connecting with dope people just as I mm-hmm. connect positive energy with a Q money bags. So um, find me, follow me. I'll send me a message. Say you found me here. I'll follow back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think that's where can we place. get the board game? The board <laughs> game is on my website. The board game is actually sold out for the second time. So every time I order more, hey. every time they sell out again. So um, since to since dot org. Go to .org, not .com, okay? I'm telling you. <laughs> it's since the since <laughs> .org. Um, um, the financial literacy board game, um, the book is going to be coming out soon. Um, I have two books. I have the book for younger children and book for older children coming out within the next two weeks. Um, we have a lot of good products. We have some downloadables you can get for easy, fun access. It's fun. I try to make financial literacy fun. So yes. the kids are like, oh, we financially lit. I'm like, hey, yeah, yes, you are. Money. yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So, yeah. So I try to keep it fun, um, um, culturally relevant. So, yeah, hit me yeah. up on the website. I love to connect with you all. Okay. Well, I truly appreciate you for taking time out of your day to speak with us I'm on honored. the Coinsy Connections podcast. And again, guys, this is Ashley. She is the founder of Sense to Sense. Make sure you check her out. Go get the board game. Go get the flashcards. And when the book and color and book drop, make sure you grab that too. Um, and until next time, guys, bye. Bye.